one of the reasons why I leveraged the uh, feral hog population on our ranch and started shooting at whitetail distances with different broadhead platforms, arrow masses, and all that stuff inside a 25 yard shot replicating 85% of the hunters out there and a lot of elk guys who call elk and get them close and trying to find out what works. Physiology 101, and this will be demonetized for sure, so it's even free. Oh. Greetings from a dreary rainy day in South Texas. That is a pig. There's another pig. We've been whacking them this morning. And I'm going to do some ba a basic physiology discussion on the difference between shooting animals and testing on any other platform. It's one of the greatest weaknesses of all the broadhead testing, gel, shooting blocks, shooting foam, etc. Compared to the physiology you encounter when you're actually live animal hunt. All right, here we have our average 100, 120 pound feral hog. I have, I have cut off the meat over the rib cage. Basically, we're gonna go over the physiology. Now, mind you, um, the diaphragm on these things runs about right here. It's just a physiologic fact. Whether you wanna shoot them back here or not, you can do it, but you're just gonna have a long day. I don't have the organs in there. I've done this a bunch on my channel. So if you want to see some other stuff, there's a lot of any video with a pig in the picture. I've done a necropsy on and shown all the internal organs, but the kill zones are literally about that big. What we're going to discuss today is why this particular animal <laughs> is a very interesting test subject and quite possibly one of the most durable things on the North American continent to test on. They have some interesting physiologic features, starting with this. It, the, the hair is super coarse and it's always full of dirt. So the minute your broadhead hits the pig, it's got to deal with this very, very coarse hair and the, and the abrasiveness of the dirt, sand, mud, everything that's just in the hair. This is not a very, you know, there's not a lot of mud on this pig. I've seen them coated in mud like an M&M &M, where they've been laying at just coated sides. Usually the boars are that way. But right off the bat, you have hair that's, you know, ten, you know, I don't know how many times coarser than your hair, but it's unbelievably coarse. And the broadhead edges have to survive that. Then the abrasiveness that's in it, you, I'm pulling, you can feel the sand rolling in my fingers. And next time y'all shoot a pig, go like this and roll it in your hands. It's real fine grit. Now, mind you, remember, your broadhead's approaching like this. And when it cuts into that stuff, all of that abrasiveness is going down the blade, chewing on it. So it's like sharpening a broadhead like that. As it passes, if you rubbed, if this was a stone and you went like this on it, it would blunt the blade. It's the same thing that's happening as the broadhead approaches the pig or elk are also pretty muddy and dirty and then hits and then starts chewing the broadhead. And I really do think that a lot of my uh, lack of success in the past was due to the actual blades eroding in the first three inches of penetration before it gets to the vital organs. I really do think some of the, my struggles early on when I thought pigs were tough was the blade quality. And you really got to watch that if you're going to shoot these guys. Well, you need to do that with any animal because you're still shooting through hair and muscle and meat. And we're going to get into that. So hang on. Don't discount what we were or what I was just talking about. We are talking about on blade quality. Um, this is something when I first started exploring, this is six or seven years ago. I went to a 300 spine arrow. I put a 100 grain brass insert. I put the Magnus that you just saw, the Stinger buzz cut on there. And I, and I started uh, polishing the edges as good as I can. I'm way better at sharpening now 
but I sharpened them out of the package. The angle of attack, the sharpness of that blade, and I started really, really putting them down a whole lot faster, and I wasn't struggling finding them and stuff because they were going 50 or 60 yards. So blade quality is a huge deal that is absolutely zero discussion in any broadhead test you see with gel or or steel or anything unless i've missed somebody's channel who's shooting through things and then pre and post testing probably so because i fish a whole lot more than i watch youtube who wants to watch a youtube <laughs> yes i know you're on youtube i like irony so i just don't think people are thinking about this from a physiologic standpoint there's one thing that kills them the broadhead has to be sharp in the internal organs one thing that kills them the broadhead has to be sharp in the internal organs not in your quiver so it may pop hair in your quiver this is what, exactly what i'm saying just noodle this and a lot of broadhead companies i'm sorry they have chinese steel it's a cost point thing they didn't really worry about the blade edge and if it would uphold at impact they're not thinking about that but the facts are this if the broadhead is super sharp in your hand, penetrates through two to four inches of stuff, rib cage, meat, hair, like you just saw, sand, and it dulls, it is not as effective internally. And nothing about the chest wall kills anything. If the broadhead only penetrates through the chest wall and sticks in about this far, they're going to be okay, probably. It's got to pass through and it has to stay sharp through impact and through the organs. If you shoot cheap steel, a lot of the mechanical broadheads, I know I knock on them a lot, the steel quality is not that good, and they dull and bend and break. A lot of the other of the broadhead platforms that are, you know, replacement blades, when you get your broadhead back, they're shredded, they're torn up, and they're all dinged up. And you should be thinking about that because it's gonna cost you something someday. If every time your broadhead, if you think your broadheads are disposable, or if that's just how you think I just shoot one and throw it away when I shoot an animal, you need to let that rattle around in your head. One of these days, that disposable thing that you're seeing, which is torn up blades that are kind of shredded, is gonna cost you on impact. And I can't prove it, I've just seen it. That when I raised my broadhead quality, learned to sharpen, and got better steel, I started seeing that the animals weren't going anywhere. Now we're six or seven years later, you know, and over time I've connected the dots. It's one of the advantages of having so many targets to shoot and taking advantage of this feral hog population we have and actually getting to test on them. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so what I did was I cut, I trimmed the meat off the top of the rib cage. You can see that's, you know, not even an inch thick. It's super wiggly, but I'm not going to attribute that to anything right now. Tough hair, sand, dirt, blah, blah, blah. When you get under the hood, you see that the, you see a lot of different textures of the meat. And then there's a layer here, and then it rides up under another layer that's on top of it here. And then you have this random muscle going up under the shoulder blade, okay? And then, of course, you have the shoulder muscle. Now, the elbow's here, the point of the elbow's there, and the shoulder blade edge is right here, okay? So the vital V is right here. There's nothing there but this piece of meat and then rib cage under that. I'm not going to separate that yet. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clean this off. So just in your mind, remember all this meat's here for your broadhead to go through as far as blood trails and stuff are also concerned. It hits this big hair that could soak up blood, right? And then meat and multi-directional meat, which is going to, when the broadhead goes through, it's going to try to go back to its form. So if one piece of meat, this under layer is going this direction and this layer is going this way and that one, is going this way. You're talking about cutting through something and it's multi-directional. So it's gonna to try to go its own direction, except it's layered.
So that's going to prevent you from having a blood trail because it's not a flat surface. It's not Minecraft. <laughs> this is really hard to refute. You can sit there and stew in your brain and make stupid comments, but it's right there in front of you. This is going this way. This layer's on top. That muscle's right there going under. This is where you'd ideally shoot, right about here. You'd hit that. When they're running, it's gonna move. Gonna close the hole and open the hole. I got a video on that. It could hit the end of this muscle up under here, and that one's going this way. This muscle's this way. Inside the shoulder, y'all know this, there's pieces and parts all in there. It's not a solid mass. It's really cool, and it explains a lot on why blood trails are really inconsistent. But it also changes, you know, it also messes with broadhead testing as far as the penetration is concerned. Once again, back to the broadhead uh, discussion around it dulling through the skin. And then that's, I don't know, this is a small pig, but I don't know, that's an inch and a half of meat right there. We haven't hit the ribs yet. So half an inch of skin inch and a half of meat in the vital V where you have to shoot them because it's the physiology of the pig. This baby laying under here and we still haven't hit the rib cage yet. Hey, if you like this content, I suggest you go to one of my playlists. Three that I might suggest. The quartering two shot series. My study of long range arrow performance, which is a study of energy and speed and everything as the arrow goes down range. And then also look at my high FOC arrow building playlist. It's got all got great information and to get you started on this crazy journey start digging a hole looking for a shovel and when you get to that shovel your efficiency in the bow hunting world and on meat performance will skyrocket the skin taken off i did pull the shoulder back i got a tape measure on there to show you the spacing and the ribs but i'm going to do a little bit on basic physiology and one of the reasons why really wide broadheads suffer on every animal on the earth and that's because the chest wall is actually flexible. If your chest wall was rigid, you would not be capable of breathing. And it's actually flexible. There's a lot of cartilage in the thing. God had this plan to not have you walk around with a cemented chest and your lungs can't move. And that's really... Well, somebody will try to refute this. Because it's YouTube and they've let the Zuni crazy people out. That's fine but it, you're about to find out that it's not refutable. Chest wall of the pig, hood's flipped up, and you can see how flexible that is, that it just gives on impact, okay? Now, it's, it's cut and it's exposed and it's a little more flexible than normal. I got that, so for you guys who actually have a medical background, this is a little more flexible than normal. I got it, but it's flexible. And then, what do you see there? It's curved. So you're not shooting a flat surface like a wall or a ballistic gel. You're not shooting a target. It's curved. That doesn't help. All right, I'm becoming relatively famous for forgetting something and just cutting into a video when you're supposed to do it all the same and in the same storyboard, but that's so freaking boring. One thing, um, if you don't think we put out some effort and waste a bunch of stuff, uh, that's just a few of the arrows we wrote or just damaged or whatever. I got to reflect all that stuff and fix it. The second thing is um, the spacing in between the ribs that you're about to see, it's a tougher target to penetrate because the spacing is so narrow, you're in, you're assured to hit bone. So when you hunt something more open rib like a deer or an elk, if it will kill those and blow through these hogs and through bigger hogs, then it will upscale. But cheaper steel, less durable broadhead platforms, etc., that suffer on pigs, are not necessarily going to make the jump up to larger animals. So it's really a great platform because you're really almost 100% guaranteed to hit a rib every time and see what the blade of your broadhead, what happens to it. Like Ed says, we don't care what the broadhead does to the animal. We care what the animals do to the broadheads. All right, I had to put the tape measure upside down because it wouldn't sit the right way, but you get the basic idea that the spacing rib... 
rib, rib. So we're looking at, I don't know, just a little over half an inch between each. Gets a little wider out here, so that one's a little over half an inch wide. You are guaranteed to hit bone, at least rib cage, every time you shoot one of these guys. Vital V or not. This is the Vital V right here. And they get a little wider there. Now oh, there's... No? Still about a little, no, oh, half an inch or so between the ribs. And that's trouble. Because you know for a fact you're going to hit ribs. And then if your steel quality isn't... Um, if your steel quality isn't up to par, it's going to get... After hitting the hair and getting the sand on it and getting chewed up, it's going to hit the rib cage and then get chewed up again. And this before it... This is... Remember, this says the broadhead has not entered the thoracic cavity, nor has it hit any vital organs yet. It's just gone through a lot of stuff. And if it's dulled, you're going to suffer. Okay, one of the other great challenges when you're doing broadhead testing on a flat surface is the fact that the animals aren't flat. It's not Minecraft. And traditionally, people are shooting at a wall or a target or plywood or a car hood. And it's the most favorable angle to hit perfectly square for measuring performance when it hits perfectly square. Unfortunately, the animals aren't square. I showed it a little earlier. We're going to go in a little bit deeper dive. There's multiple angles as the animal changes angles that come into play that really expose the weakness of shooting flat surfaces in a broadhead test. So I put an arrow shaft on the pig kind of where the shoulder meat would be. It's not an exact science, but you can see the drop from the back of the rib cage and it goes downhill. So it's actually, you know, curved downhill as you reach the actual kill zone, which is this part forward. This is on every animal on earth. Granted, feral hogs are very tapered in the front. So this is a relatively extreme example, but everything is wider in the back. The guts are all back here and stuff. And then it always tapers some. So you have a pretty complex angle. And <laughs> think about broadside. Is it really broadside? Well, I mean, the shoulder meets on there, but the thoracic wall is curved. So it adds angles as the arrow penetrates straight through the meat. And then all of a sudden there's an angle here, like a quartering shot. But it's broadside. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> on a pig... You know, we're looking at three and a half, almost three and a half inches of drop. And this is angled uphill. Okay, it's angled uphill. But your arrow's approaching like that. So it's actually hitting an angled surface after going through the shoulder meat. Something I've never, this just popped in my head when I was sitting inside drinking coffee. That's pretty crazy. The second problem is, Okay, we have we have this angle going here. It's also, right, that direction. Is that the same direction? No, it's not. On a broadside shot, right, it penetrates this way. And you hit a little bit back here, and that changes the angles. And as you move all around in this area, the angles constantly change. So once again, it penetrates the shoulder meat and then hits this, and this is angled, which... We don't know what happens with the, you know, impact. And then <clears throat> from this angle, it's also curved this way. So it's going downhill, but it's not a flat surface. And it's rounded. It's just multiple angles. Dr. Ed talked about this and his skipping in part in all, all throughout the study. That the, the fact that there's so much going on here as the broadhead attempts to penetrate and then it has to break the wall here to do any killing. It is inefficient if it stops right here. That's pretty straightforward, but it's got to get through there. And we're going to assume you hit right between the ribs and this is what's going to happen. It's going to hit that flexible and right at that point of the broadhead, and there's a ton left to go through the rib cage, 
This is why they really underperform on penetration on these guys. You, you have to ideally hit them like that every time, and that's very difficult to do. So even angled, went right in, right? Get over here. If you hit right between the ribs, you're fine, okay? But you're still gonna hit the blade and then watch it is torquing because it wants to ride the rib cage and roll. That might help, that might not. But any kind of broadside shot and it hits like that, you're gonna rake it down the rib cage and really, really tear up the blades. And it's gonna wanna stop, okay? So final thoughts on this. I know I showed a mechanical and all that stuff. And you know I'm not a mechanical guy. It was just to show you how wide they get and the fact that they're going to hit bones, it's almost guaranteed. And then the blade erosion is what I call it. Blunting, dulling, whatever, however your head wants to, you know, frame that. The possibility of it actually dulling the blades is almost 100%. You have to hit perfectly vertical every time or you're going to hit ribs. And then it's going to slow it down and stuff because the chest wall's elastic and it's going to push real hard. And the chest wall is going to give some as it parachutes out and tries to penetrate a moving target now. When it pushes on the ribs, the rib cage is moving. Not to mention they're jumping the string. But the crux of all this is you saw all the angles. You saw the way the rib cage is rounded. There's basically never a broadside shot. Yes, there's a broadside shot in the fact that the animal is standing broadside, but on penetration, nothing's flat. Ed Ashby talked about this in the study. It's one of the advantages of testing on animals versus a surrogate target. Um, it's just very difficult to replicate the curves and the rhomboids and the ribs themselves aren't straight or flat. They're rounded too. The meat of the shoulder and everything else in the way that has the potential to send your arrow. If the animal stands completely still, it's still interacting with multi-directional things of random densities as it penetrates the target. And when you shoot something that's solid and consistent like foam, gel, target walls, etc. you're lying to yourself. It's a good thing to have people like Barnett around. The target defines the test. And if you can't figure out or you just are stuck in your head and you hate the ranch fair or whatever, and you can't see that clearly this target it has random angles going on, changing densities and changing structures which it is flying through that do different things to a broadhead, that's fine. I, I don't care. It's pretty concrete. For those of you that just want to noodle this a little bit, you know, think about when you watch broadhead testing videos, people put out a lot of effort on these things and I get that and they're trying. Not everybody has the advantage of having a place to go with a bunch of targets that are alive and running around. I get that. But I just want you to level set in your head when you see the results, it's a result in that target. And then you've got to think about your broadhead choices for the future. All right, that's the ranch ferry. <sighs> it's not supposed to stop raining today and we're gonna do some testing and stuff and so we're gonna be damp. <laughs> I might get mold on my skin. My leathery neck will be green from mold. It's a beautiful day. At least it did in 40 degrees. I've been down here when it's like this in 40 and it's miserable. Y'all have a great day. Subscribe if you want to, it's a free country. I'm still America so far, as long as I can tell. And like I always say, if you want to subscribe, please do. And if you don't, well, fine, don't. I don't care. Hit the thumbs up thing, whatever, all them dinger bells and stuff. I'm old. I don't care about that stuff either. But it helps me out, I think. Yeah, whatever. See ya. From a physiologic standpoint, there's one thing that kills them. The broadhead has to be sharp in the internal organs. Uh -huh.